Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to talk about properties of real numbers. So after we study this section, we're going to figure out how to rewrite expressions using the commutative and associative properties of addition and multiplication, multiply using the distributive property, and also identify properties used to rewrite an expression. So in this section, we're going to use a list of properties that we pretty much know from our daily experience of real numbers, but we just don't have the names associated with them. So now they're going to be given names. The commutative and associative properties. So these properties say if A, B, and C are just real numbers, the commutative property of addition means A plus B will always give you the same answer as B plus A. So it doesn't matter what order you add, you will always get the same answer. The sum will remain the same. Okay, same thing with multiplication. You have the commutative property of multiplication, meaning that A times B will always give you B times A with real numbers. So if you change the order in which you multiply, the product will always be the same. So here's an example of the commutative property for addition. If you start with 5 and you add 8 to it, that would be the same as if you started with 8 and you added 5. Both answers will still be 13, but it doesn't matter what order you add in, the sum will always be the same. Same thing with multiplication. So you can start with 2 and multiply by y, or you can start with y and multiply by 2. You're going to get the same answer either way. And this is called the commutative property of multiplication. So example 1, we're going to use the commutative properties of addition and multiplication. Simplify each of the following expressions. 9 plus y plus 4. So this is saying you can start with 9 plus y and add 4, or you can use the commutative property and say you start with 4 and add 9 plus y to it. So now 4 plus 9, you can do those and get 13 plus y. And now if you don't like the, the number first and the variable second, the commutative property says you can rearrange the terms in the sum and get y plus 13. And so this is called the commutative property of addition. Okay, number two, you have five plus x plus three. So again, we can rearrange the addition in any order that we want because the sum will always be the same. So we can have three plus five plus x, and then three plus five will give us eight plus x. Now eight and x are not considered to be like terms. So one's a number and the other's a variable, so keep them separate. But again, if you don't like the number being the first and the variable being second, you can rearrange it using the commutative property to be x plus 8. It doesn't matter which order you add in, you'll get the same answer either way because you're using the commutative property of addition. So two basic operations subtraction and division are not commutative. That means if you take 8 subtract 6, you'll get 2. But if you did 6 subtract 8, so if you reverse the order, 6 subtract 8 is negative 2. So you don't get the same answer. So subtraction is not commutative. Same thing with division. If you took 20 divided by 5, the answer is 4. But if you took 5 divided by 20, you get 1 fourth. So the answers are not the same. So division is also not commutative. So there's another property of real numbers that have been used several times already when we were dealing with grouping symbols. And these are called the associative property of addition and multiplication. The associative property of addition. This means if you have A, a real number, plus, and you have these two real numbers grouped together, B plus C, it doesn't matter how you group the sum. You can group the first two numbers, a plus b, and then you can add c outside the grouping. So this is called the associative property. Changing the grouping of the numbers in a sum will not change your answer. Same thing with associative property for multiplication. If you have a outside the grouping, inside the grouping of b times c, you can rearrange the grouping because you are just multiplying. It's a times b times c. So if you're multiplying all three of these real numbers together, you can multiply in any order. A times B first in that group, and then multiply by C last. So changing the grouping of the numbers in a product 
will not change your answer either. So the following example is going to illustrate how we can use the associative properties for addition and multiplication involving numbers and variables. So example two, associative properties of addition and multiplication simplify each of the following expressions. So number one, you have four plus the grouping or the quantity five plus x. So I can combine the four and the five, so let's group those together. So you have four plus five, then plus x outside the grouping. So four plus five gives me nine, and then I have x. So that is called the associative property of addition because we grouped four and the five together because we were just doing addition. Okay, number two says you have three times the quantity or the group, one third times x. Now I know I can do three times one third and I'm multiplying all three of them together anyways. So let's regroup this. I can do three times one third and then I can multiply by x outside the parentheses. Three times one third, this is three divided by one times one third. That's one times x and one times x is just x. So this is the associative property of multiplication. So this gives you an idea of how to use the associative property of addition and multiplication to actually simplify expressions involving sums and products. So for the next two problems, why don't you try them out yourself first? So pause the video and then we'll check our answers afterwards. Okay, so number three, let's go over this together. So if you have one fifth times five x in a group, then you can use the associative property of multiplication to rewrite this. You can rewrite this as one fifth times five, and one fifth times five is one, and then you have multiplication by x, one times x is x. So use the associative property of multiplication to rewrite this as one fifth times five first. Number four, you have the quantity x plus seven, and then plus three outside the parentheses. Well, I want to be able to add 7 and 3, so let's rewrite the addition problem to be 7 plus 3 in one group and x outside the group. So x plus 7 plus 3 gives you 10, and that's the associative property of addition. So for these four problems, don't focus on just the answer. Focus on how you can rewrite the problem so that you can use the associative property of addition or multiplication. Okay, so let's move on to the distributive property. The associative property and the commutative properties for addition and multiplication are just that. You can only use them for all addition problems or the, if the entire problem is multiplication. But what if there's a problem involving addition and multiplication? Well, you need to use what's called the distributive property. So distributive property says you have multiplication of A times a quantity that's a sum. So inside the parentheses you have a B plus C. How can you multiply with a parentheses that's a sum? The distributive property says you can take a and multiply to each term in the sum or inside the grouping. So a times b and a times c. And you keep the sign between the two. So you have a times b plus and you do a times c. So make sure that you distribute the a to both of the terms in the parentheses. So multiplication will always distribute over addition. Now, since subtraction can always be rewritten in terms of addition, there is also a distributive property for subtraction problems as well. So if you had A times the quantity B subtract C, you can distribute the A to the B, and you can distribute the A to the C as well, and keep the sign between the two products. So A times B subtract A times C where a, b, and c are any three real numbers. So what this means is that you are using a distributive property, so distribute or multiply, a to b and a to c. So make sure you multiply the a to each term, a times b and a times c. So example three, distributive property, Simplify each of the following expressions using the distributive property. So number one says three times the quantity x plus two. So you have a multiplication problem, three times the quantity, 
and you also have a sum or an addition problem, x plus 2. So the problem says you can distribute the 3 to the x and 3 to the 2. So 3 times x gives you 3x. 3 times 2, oh, keep the sign, make sure you keep the sign. 3 times 2 is 6. So 3x plus 6 is exactly what 3 times x plus 2 would be. Okay, number 2. This time you have a negative on the outside of the parentheses, so it's like a negative 1 times the quantity 7x minus 6y. So let's rewrite the problem again. So take the negative, or negative 1, and distribute to both terms inside the, the difference, or the subtraction problem. Negative 7x, and then minus, because you want to keep this minus sign, negative 6y. So now we know that from the previous couple videos, if you were subtracting a negative, it's really like adding a positive. So negative 7x plus 6y, and that's simplified. The x and the y cannot be combined because they're two separate variables. Okay, number three, you have five times the quantity, 7a minus three, and then outside the parentheses, you have a plus two. So keep in mind that you can only distribute two inside the parentheses, not outside the parentheses. So this time, we'll rewrite the problem again. So take the 5, it's being multiplied to the parentheses, 7a subtract 3. So take 5 and distribute to 7a. You also have 5 times negative 3. Keep the sign between the terms. 5 times 3. And then you have the plus 2. Now plus 2 is not inside the parentheses, so I can't distribute the 5 to the 2. So it just stays plus 2. All right, so now it's simplified completely. 5 times 7a can be 35a. Subtract 5 times 3 is subtract 15 plus 2. Now keep in mind, I'm using the order of operations as well. I have to multiply before I add. So now negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. So 35a minus 13. Okay, number 4. You have 1 subtract 3 times b minus 2 in parentheses, then subtract 4 outside the parentheses. So again, it's a very common mistake that everyone tries 1 subtract 3 first and get negative 2. Well, you can't do subtraction or addition until you've done parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division. Addition and subtraction should always be the last step with order of operations. So if I see this, I see multiplication negative 3 times the parentheses. So let's do that first. So let's recopy the problem. Take negative 3. So always take the sign with the number when you distribute. So negative 3 times b and negative 3 times negative 2. So this 1 will stay out in front just for a second. Negative 3 times b is negative 3b. Negative 3 times negative 2. And then you have this minus 4 that's outside the parentheses. So it will also stay the same. Okay, keep simplifying. You have 1 minus 3b. So let's do this the multiplication next. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives you 6. And then subtract 4. So now we've taken care of the multiplication. We should only have addition and subtraction problems left. So negative 3b is the variable term. So let's keep it the same. There's no other variable terms in the problem, but there's real numbers by themselves. There's a 1, there's a 6, and you're adding those. So that's 1 plus 6 that gives you 7. 7 subtract 4 will give you positive 3. So negative 3b plus 3. Okay, number 5. This time we're going to have a fraction on the outside times quantity 3x plus 6. So the distributive property works for any real numbers, even fractions because fractions are real numbers. So we're going to distribute the one-third through the parentheses this time. One-third times 3x plus one-third times 6. So now simplify. One-third times 3, we did this problem earlier. One-third times 3x just gives you x, because one-third times 3 is 1, and 1 times x just gives you x. One third times 6. You can make the 6 divided by 1, so put 6 over 1 to make it a fraction, and then 1 third times 6 will give you 2. 
so x plus 2. Okay, and then number 6, you have negative 12 on the outside of the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, you have fractions involving the terms. So 2 thirds x plus 1 half y. So you can distribute the negative 12 to each term, which will involve the fractions. So you have negative 12 times 2 thirds x plus, keep the sign between the terms, negative 12 times 1 half y. So now negative 12 times 2 thirds. You can make negative 12 a fraction by placing it over 1. So then you have negative 12 times 2 in the numerator and 1 times 3 in the denominator. This will give you negative 24 thirds and you keep the x. Same idea for the second term. You have negative 12 divided by 1 times 1 half. That will give you negative 12 divided by 2 and you keep the y. And now simplify if you can. 24 divided by 3 is 8, so this will be negative 8x. And 12 divided by 2 is 6, so minus 6y. And so that's how you can use the distributive property along with addition and subtraction of real numbers. Okay, one of the last things that we need to talk about are some special numbers that come up in math, and they're 0 and the number 1. So this is called the additive identity property. This is a really weird way of saying if you have anything and you add zero to it, it remains the same. That's all it says. So if you start with a real number and you add zero, the number stays the same as you originally had. Or if you had zero and you add a, you will still get a. So in other words, if you add zero to any number, it does not change the value of the number. The multiplicative identity property says there is a number 1 so that if you take any number and you multiply by 1, it remains the same. So a times 1 is a, or if you had 1, multiply it by a, you also get a. So multiplying by 1 to any number will not change the value of the number. The additive inverse property says if you take the number a and you add its opposite, so opposite of a, you get 0 as the answer in the sum. So opposites, when you add, will always give you zero. And then finally, the multiplicative inverse property. This means if you have any number a except for zero, there will always be a number one divided by a, so it's reciprocal, so that when you multiply a with its reciprocal, one divided by a, you get one. So in other words, reciprocals will always multiply to give you one. So the last thing that we're going to do in this video is to identify properties. There's one final property that we need to talk about, and this is just the symmetric property. The symmetric property says whatever is equal to on the left side and the right side, it doesn't matter which side is the left or the right side of the equals. So if A equals B, A is the left side, B is the right side of the equals, you could put B on the left side and A on the right side, and the, it's still equal. So it doesn't matter which is on the left, which one's on the right side, if it's an equal sign. So one quantity equals another means the second quantity also equals the first. So of all the basic properties that we have listed in this section, the commutative, the associative, and the distributive properties are the ones that are used the most often in math. And they can be good justifications for why we simplify algebraic expressions the way we do. So example four illustrates the use of all the properties in this video. So each sub-example contains an algebraic expression that has been changed in some way. We need to identify what is the property that's being used so that the expression was changed. So example four, properties of real numbers. State the property of real numbers that justifies the following given statements. So number one, x plus five equals five plus x. So what property said, it doesn't matter what order you add in. You can have one number plus the other, or you can have the second number plus the first number. This was the commutative property of addition. Number two, you have the quantity two plus x plus y equals two plus the quantity x plus y. So this, is, this states that it doesn't matter how you group when you're adding. So what property was that? It was the associative property of addition.
Okay, so this example isn't having us simplify at all. It just says state the property. So that's what we're doing. Number three, you have six times the quantity, x plus three, and it simplifies to six x plus 18. So what property is being used here? It looks like you have a multiplication problem, six times the quantity, and inside the parentheses you have an addition problem. So what property combines multiplication and addition? It's the distributive property. It looks like the 6 has been distributed to inside the parentheses with the x and the 3. Okay, number 4. 2 plus negative 2 gives you 0. So what property said if you add 2 with its opposite, you get 0? It's the additive inverse property. Okay, number 5 says 3 times 1 third gives you 1. What property said if you take 3 multiplied by its reciprocal, you get 1. This was the multiplicative inverse property. So those are two problems involving the numbers 0 and 1. Number 6, you have 2 plus 0 in parentheses plus 3, and you get 2 plus 3. So this property is saying, what happens if you take any number and you add 0? It just stays the same number, 2. So this was the additive identity property. So number 7, it says quantity 2 plus 3 plus 4 outside the parentheses equals 3 outside the parentheses, but plus 2 plus 4 inside the parentheses. So what property said you can rearrange the parentheses or the groupings? That was the associative property of addition. But it's not just that. Notice that the 2 and the 3 are grouped together, but it was on the right side was 3 plus 2, not 2 plus 3. So it looks like they've changed the order of the sum as well. So that was the commutative property of addition. So they're using both properties in the same problem. Okay, number eight. You have the quantity x plus two and then plus y outside the parentheses equals x plus y grouped together and then plus two outside the parentheses. So if you look at number 8 compared to number 7, they're very similar. It looks like they're using the same properties. So number 8 is also using the associative property of addition. And also the commutative property of addition. Okay, and then number 9 says, if x equals 6, then 6 equals x. And this was called the symmetric property. So it doesn't matter if the left side equals the right side or the right side equals the left side. If you just rearrange the left to be the right side of the equals or the right side to be the left side, that's called the symmetric property. So as a final note on the properties of real numbers, we should mention that although some of the properties are stated for only two or three real numbers, every single property that we talked about in this video holds for any number of real numbers. You can do the properties for four different real numbers or five different real numbers, any number of real numbers, it, these properties will work. So it's not important how many numbers are in the sum or a product. What's important is that it is a product or just a sum. So this finishes up our discussion on properties of real numbers. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about simplifying algebraic expressions.